Hey guys, welcome back to our little shop game. Today we're going to work a little bit more with arrays because they are super important for video games. It's really important that you understand how this stuff works. And we're going to do that by enhancing our little shop game uh, to make it so that we can purchase items and then it'll print out what our inventory is. And then we can keep buying more and more items and it'll tell us uh, what's in our inventory. So we need to actually store the inventory. Now like before, we don't want to have a whole bunch of variables that represent our inventory. We just want one variable that's going to be an array that represents our inventory. Now what we can do is store an array of integers where each integer represents the number of boots or swords or helmets we have. So the what we're going to do is create an integer array with int and then we're going to call it player inventory. And then it's going to be num items just like before because we created this constant int right here that makes it super easy for us. And the num items is 6, so we're going to set it equal to, and now we need to initialize it. And the way this works is each element in player inventory corresponds exactly to the element in shop items. So if the first element in num items, which is array index 0, is a 3, that means we have three pairs of boots because the first uh, element in shop item names is boots. If the last one is a six, then we have six pairs of leggings. Makes sense? It's really it's a really neat way to do this, and you're going to use stuff like this all the time. There's other better ways to make an inventory system. This probably isn't what you would want to use in a final game, but this works just fine for our small little game, and we don't really have to worry about performance or anything like that right now. So we're just going to do this in order to learn more about arrays. So first, let's initialize it, and we're going to say we have nothing in our inventory at all. Actually, let's say we have a kitten in our inventory because we have our traveling companion. So we're going to say zero for boots, comma, zero for sword, comma, zero for helmet, comma, one for kitten, comma, zero for poleaxe, comma, whoa, zero for leggings. So let's actually make all these plural because it makes more sense whenever we have multiple uh, copies of them. There we go. All right, so here is our initialized inventory, and we'll want a, a semicolon at the end. So now what we can do is we can print out uh, how many of, of each item we have uh, using this array. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's make a function that prints out the player inventory. So we're going to prototype our function first. We're going to say void print inventory. And we're going to pass in an array. Now you can pass in an array really simply. You just say int, and then whatever your array name is, we're going to call it player inventory. We're going to call it the exact same thing, inventory. But remember, this doesn't have to have the same name. And then in the brackets right here, you don't actually have to put anything, believe it or not. But it makes it uh, just a little bit easier to put a value in here. Now if we put num items here, it's actually going to give us an error because num items isn't defined yet. Since this is a constant int, it's okay to copy it and paste it right here at the top. That makes it so that anything in the entire program below it knows what it is. Now this is what's called a global variable. All of your functions know what this variable is. Anything in this entire file that's below this will know what it is. If it wasn't constant, this is typically a bad thing to do. And there'll be more on why that's a bad thing to do. It'll still work okay. But you just don't want to do this without constant variables for the most part. We'll learn more about that later. But now this is going to work. And this is a prototype, so we're going to put our semicolon there. And let's put the actual implementation down here. So I'm copy-pasting it. Okay, so we're passing in the inventory, and we have num items is the number of the inventory, so we can just loop through it. So let's do a for loop. For int i equals zero, i is less than, and we're going to say num items, and then i plus plus. Now, what we're going to do is at each item spot, we're only going to print something if we have greater than one. Because if we have zero kittens, we don't need to say, you have zero kittens. We just don't say anything at all. So we're going to say, if player inventory i, remember it's an integer, is greater than zero. And then here is where we actually print it out uh, to the screen. Now, the problem is, we want to be able to say, for instance, you have five kittens, but... The shop item names right here is in main. Now, since this is never going to change, remember, something that's never going to change is constant. You can call it constant. And then constants are okay to be global variables. We can just make this a global variable. So let's copy it up here. And we need to make sure it's constant. C-O-N-S-T. Okay, so now nobody can ever change it. If we tried to say shop item names uh, 3 equals blah, that would 
that's going to give us an error because we can't modify a constant L value. And that's what we want. We don't want our shop's item to change in this particular game. So now down here, it knows where it is. It can print it out. Alternatively, we could have passed in shop item names as a parameter, but I want to get you familiar with constant global variables because they are pretty useful. Okay, so now we're going to come down here and if that inventory item is greater than zero, right? What we're going to do is say, see out, and then the way I'm going to format this is I'm going to say uh, the number of items we have, player inventory i, because remember that's the integer that represents the number. And then I'm going to type times, like for that, that's how many we have. And then the name of the item, which is going to be, uh, let's see, shop item names, right? So shop item names i because remember the i index or whichever index we're referring to in player inventory corresponds to the same one in shop item names so we're going to use i for both of these and then let's do an indel and let's do a good see out statement right up here see out your inventory is something like that that works fine doesn't really matter at all. And I'm going to do an extra inline here at the end just to see out indel. So we can just call print inventory anytime we want to print the inventory. So let's go ahead and say print inventory here to test it. Print inventory. And remember, we need to pass in player inventory as a parameter. So let's do that here player inventory. And let's hit run. So we should get our inventory printed to the screen. There we go. So I zoom in here. Remember, I had one kitten and that's all I had. So your inventory is one times kittens. Really, really simple. So how are we going to buy things? How are we going to get input um, for that? Well, let's create a, a little for loop that does that. So let's see. Um, we should make a for loop that prints the shop. So let's go ahead and do a function that does that. Void print shop because we want to make a good game. And since the shop is a is, uh, a constant global variable we don't have to pass in any parameters we're just going to copy this right here and uh, let's just copy we'll do it like this we'll do yeah we'll, we'll copy this and we'll replace it with print shop okay there we go this will print the shop and I'm actually going to do a C out uh, shop inventory or something that's fine you can print this out however you want this is just how i'm formatting it there we go so this will print out the shop so we're going to call print shop there we're going to call print inventory what we actually want to do is keep playing this game and keep getting input so we're going to put this all in a while loop okay so we're going to say uh, while and then we'll enclose let's get rid of this see out what do you want to buy for now We'll enclose this in there. So it's going to keep doing this. What we want to do is have a variable that tells us when we're done playing. So we're going to say boolean, or sorry, bool is done. And we're going to say is done equals false. We're going to initialize it to false. So while is done is equal to false, we're going to keep doing this loop. This is called a game loop. Okay, you're going to use this in pretty much all of your games. I think I may have told you what a game loop is before, but this is done variable is going to tell us when to quit the loop. If we say is done equals true here, then the game is going to be over. So this is going to infinitely print out the shop in the inventory. That's not what we want. We also want to get input from the user. So let's make a new variable. We'll call, or sorry, a new function. We'll call it void, um, void buy items. Okay, and I'm going to copy this down here at the bottom. Void buy items. Now, what we want buy items to do is to modify the player inventory. So we need to pass in the player inventory to it. So let's copy this right here. We're going to do the same thing in buy items. So we're passing in the player inventory. Now you're probably thinking, okay, if we're going to modify it, remember, we don't want to pass it by value. We want to pass it by reference. But actually, this is going to give you an error because arrays are special in that they're always by reference. And you'll learn why later, but you can't pass an array by value. Arrays are inherently by reference. So anytime we pass an array, we have to be worried 
that it's going to get changed, right? Because they can change the original contents of the array. But that's what we want with buy items. In print inventory, the original uh, array is not going to be changed, so we're fine. We can actually enforce that. We can make sure that print inventory doesn't change it if we type const here in the parameter list. And that's something that you can or or you don't you might want to do it, but you don't really have to. That's just another little tidbit for you to know. If you type const int here, all it does is make it so that in this function, in this print function, you can't change player inventory because you know that's that's not what we want it to do. We don't want print inventory to change the inventory. However, we do want buy items to change the inventory. So we're going to just keep passing it in by reference, which remember it is referenced by default. So what we're going to do is actually number each item in the shop. So what we need to do is modify our print shop function so that it numbers each of them. And then we just input the number uh, corresponding to which shop item we wanna buy. So we're gonna say see out um, I plus one here, and then I'll do a period and a space in between. Now the reason I did I plus one is because we want to number the items one to six. We don't want to number them zero to five. So that's going to print that out, and then it's going to get input right here. We're going to type buy items, and then we pass in player inventory, just like we did to print inventory, only this time we're passing it in by reference, not constant, so it's actually going to be able to be changed. All right, so buy items needs to get input, so we're going to see out what would you like to buy. Enter, and then we're going to tell them what to enter. We want them to enter the number 0 through 6, or num items. So what we can say is enter and then we'll say like um, we'll put a parenthesis there and we'll say one yeah not zero one and then a dash and then a six. So here's our little formatting. Sometimes it's a little annoying to do these print statements. And then we'll do a colon and we'll have them enter it on the same line. I think that sounds good. So then we're just going to get cn and then something. We need a local variable. So we're going to say int. We'll just call it input. You can call it whatever you want. And we're going to get cn input. So this is going to read in a number from the user. We're going to type in what we want to buy. So let's go ahead and just test it this far because we've typed in a whole lot of code. So let's go ahead and zoom in. And you'll see it's printing the shop inventory with our shop inventory function. Then it's printing our inventory. And then it's calling the buy items function. And it's asking us what we want to buy. So I'm going to input something. And then it should repeat the whole thing. See, we get shop inventory again. We get your inventory is. And it asks me what I want to buy again. Now, we didn't actually buy anything. So what we need to do is make it so that we can actually purchase items. Also, what I'm going to do is see out a few new lines here. Because I think it looks ugly if they're all next to each other. There we go. So I just put three new lines at the end of this while loop. So each time it goes through, it's going to print all those new lines. All right, so we got a CN input. Now we need to we need to increment this, uh, which whichever one they inputted. So if they inputted a one, we need to increment the first item, which is actually the zeroth index. We need to increment it by one. So what we're going to do is say player inventory And then since we want the, if they type in a one, we want to change the index, we want, we want to change the variable at index zero. If they type in a four, we want to change in the variable at index three, remember, because we're typing it out from one to six, but it's actually zero to five in the array. So we're going to just type input minus one, and then a semi, and then a plus plus, and then a semicolon. So that's going to add one to it. And then the next time we print it out, it should tell us that we, we bought an item. This is really, really simple stuff. Now, if we if we type in like a word or something, it's going to crash our program. We're assuming they're going to be smart and type in the correct input. Let's at least check to make sure. Oh, this shouldn't be a six. I'm sorry. This should be num items. Let's at least check and make sure that they typed in a number that makes sense. So let's say if input is less than zero or input is greater than num items, then we're going to tell them that they did something stupid. We're going to say, see out, that was a bad input, and then exclamation point, or something like that. Because if they type in negative 1 or something, that's that doesn't make sense. We can't say negative 2 plus plus. That's not what we want. 
So we'll just do a C out bad input, and then we can just return out of this function. We can just type return here or something like that, and that'll return and it'll continue the loop, and then they can try again next time, basically. So let's see, what do we have? We're adding one to our inventory. We're uh, C outing what do you want to buy. We're doing C and input. Is there anything we are missing? Uh, we're doing a little bit of error checking. Ah, there's one last thing we want to do. We want to check if they want to quit. So what we should do is actually make it to where if they type in a certain number or something, it'll quit. So we could say enter negative one to quit. And then enter whatever. So what we can do is before we do this, we can check if input is equal to negative one, then we're gonna we're gonna want to quit the program. So how do we tell this variable right here, this uh, where is it? This is done. We want to set this to true when we want to quit. So the way we're going to do that is actually instead of passing in is done as a reference parameter, we're just going to return a value. So I'm going to make uh, this instead of a void function, I'm going to make it a bool function because remember this right here determines what the function returns. So up here we have to change this as well to a bool. And then the way this is going to work is when we return false. That means the program keeps running. However, when we return true, that means the program is over. So the program is over, keep going. And we need to put a return false at the end because anytime you have a non-void function, you need to have a, a return value at the end. Okay, so now this is going to tell us when to quit if they type a negative one. So what we need to do is actually check that. So if buy items is equal to true, right? Because when we return true, that means we want to quit. We're going to say is done equals true. Now, an even smarter way of writing this is we could just say is done equals this. Because if this returns false, is done is going to get set equal to false. So this is still going to be false and it's going to keep going. However, if they type a negative one, is done is going to get set equal to uh a true value and so it's going to quit. So here's just a little trick. It saves you an if statement. All right, so this is our finished product. I know it was a lot of code. This is the first uh, like little game we've actually done uh, in the lesson plan and not in a challenge episode, but hopefully you learned something. You can always replay the video or uh, you know pause it and go through slowly. All right, so what do you want to buy? First, let's try quitting. Let's type negative one and then press any key to continue it quits. So that worked. Let's run it again and then let's buy something. So let's buy a helmet. There we go, at the bottom it says we have one helmet. Let's buy another helmet. Oh, now we have two helmets. Let's buy some leggings. If we type a six, we get a leggings. If we type a two, we get a sword. See, it works perfectly. What if we type 99? It says up here that was bad input, and then it keeps going and we don't get anything else. So here is our inventory program. You could go on and make some kind of crazy dungeon adventure with this, but I wouldn't do that just yet because one of our challenge episodes, not the next one, but one of them is going to involve making a little a little dungeon game, a little ASCII dungeon game. So just keep this stuff in mind. I hope you know a lot about arrays right now, and I hope you've learned something about constant ints and global variables. And uh, this has just been an action-packed episode. Stay tuned for the next episode, and then we are going to be moving on to our next challenge. Thanks, guys.